Welcome, I'm Catherine Paquet. We will be discussing managing and monitoring your ESA using CLI and GUI. So, with the CLI, we will be using it to managing the email when it's within the pipeline. We can go and, you, at the CLI, go and add an example would be like message filter, how that email will be treated as it's crossing the ESA. Most of that stuff, though, we typically do it at the GUI. One thing we do quite a bit, though, at the CLI will be monitoring for our ESA. We can look at message activity, we can grep messages, we can tell messages, looking at the logs. We can also look at system resources, and we can also investigate some issues with, uh, with the box. So using the CLI, we could look, as an example, at top host. In a previous conversation uh, recording, I did mention that what happened when uh, one of the hosts actually that we're trying to send an email to is not available. And previous uh, competitor, previous version of, of competitor of Iron Port, all the email would just get into the queue in line waiting to be sent out. And I mentioned also that Iron Port was the first one to come out with that novel idea of having actually for each destination domain having a queue. This is your chance to have a look at all those outbound queues. So we have with the command top host here, you can see actually all the top list of all the top 20 hosts that you are, that your ESA is communicating to, to send outbound email. Suspend listener. Maybe you need to do some job on your ESA or you need to investigate a huge issue with the ESA. So you would like actually your public listener, which is receiving email, to stop receiving email for while you're doing some investigation. So you could use actually the suspend listener uh, command to stop actually on your, in this case would be your inbound mail, mail arriving from the internet. You'd like just to suspend actually receiving email. So the port 25 will no longer receive email and all the email that are currently in the work queue, they will be processed and exit eventually. One note of caution here, and I put it as a tip on the slide, is that when you issue the command suspend listener inbound mail, if you reboot your ESA, your outbound mail listener is still in suspend mode. So you need as much a, same thing as you do a manual suspend listener, you need to also bring back that listener live because during a reboot, actually the suspend listener state is maintained. Another thing we can do actually, and you can do those commands only at the CLI, is actually uh, taking care of the actual data port. You remember when I discussed that uh, with the ESA on the previous recording, I mentioned that with the concept of the ESA, we have the layer two, we have the layer three, and we have layer four. And layer two is your port. So that would be actually your ethernet things. Ethernet uh, card. Layer three will be what they call IP interface, and that's where we're going to give actually an address, an address. And layer four is our listener. So layer two stuff can be done at the CLI. You cannot do layer two stuff actually from the GUI. So with the command etherconfig, that's where you can go and pair two uh, two interface port together. You would do that to provide some physical redundancy between two Ethernet port. You can create VLAN, loopback. Uh, loopback would be used actually if your ESA is sitting behind a low balancer. Uh, media, you can s change some of your setting like fast Ethernet as an example. MTU and the multicast. One thing that we have with Cisco Iron Port equipment is the fact that when you go and make a change, uh, let's say I'm creating a new, uh, a new incoming, incoming mail filter, whatever, and at the bottom of my screen, I will have the submit button. So when we make changes, we will always have the button submit. When you submit a change, that change is going into the queue 
to eventually be processed, but it's not put right away in production. So to put a change in production, you have to commit to it. In the upper left, uh, sorry, upper right corner of your screen, that's where you will see the commit changes. Let's say I make a change and I, uh, I submit, and now I want to commit. I press on the commit button, and it will take me to this additional window. So a new pop-up will appear on your screen. And with that pop-up, you'll say, yeah, I want to commit to that change that I just made. So when you want to commit to a change, it's a good habit, actually, to write down a uh, comment about what the change you just made. And the reason why it's a good idea to add that comment is because what about if you need to revert? And when you go back at the CLI, you can go back at the CLI to revert to a previous configuration, you'd like to be able to see the comment to know which one, where do you want to revert to. Otherwise, you only have the timestamps. So commit is a good, uh, uh, writing a description when you commit is a good habit to take. What about though you say you make a change to your antivirus, you submit to it, and then 30 seconds later you say, no, 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 I don't want to make that change. Well, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but you have to go and click on commit. Once you click on commit, you're going to select abandon changes. There's also some, that's about the extent of the configuration we'll do actually on the, on the CLI. Most of what you're going to be doing will be at the GUI. And the rest of the class, here and there, sometimes we'll talk about CLI, but really the bulk of the job is all done at the GUI. And the GUI will be used for our HTTP, HTTPS as an administrator so we can log and start making changes. You can also have a look at system status. So system status is not something reserved only to the CLI. You can also have a look at your system status, such as uh, CPU cycle, memory usage. And you can do that actually from under the monitor menu. Um, now, the system status will actually show you here receiving suspended. It will report that receiver is receiving is suspended only and only if all your listeners are suspended. So if you have two listeners inside your ESA and only one of them you suspended, and you remember I mentioned a few slides ago that when you suspend a listener and you reboot, the state is still suspended on that listener. Well, at the GUI, the GUI will tell you actually receiving suspended only and only if both listeners are shut down. So just watch for that. One listener be shut down, be down, is not enough for the GUI to tell you that your listener has been suspended. So thank you very much for attending this recording. On this recording, we discuss actually managing and monitoring your ESA, and we discuss mainly the CLI and the GUI. More trick on the CLI, actually managing, coming up in next recordings. Thank you for attending.